It's the real news. I'm Aaron Matte. Tuesday was primary day in the U.S. and the first major one of the 2018 campaign season. Votes were held in four states, Indiana, North Carolina, West Virginia, and Ohio. And for both parties, the contests are an early test of which direction will prevail heading into the 2018 midterms. For Republicans, will candidates rally around President Trump? And for Democrats, who will win the fight between grassroots progressives and centrist candidates favored by the party leadership? Well, joining me is John Nichols, National Affairs Correspondent for The Nation magazine. Welcome, John. Let's start in Ohio, always a key state in every vote. And on the Democratic side for governor, you had uh, a very uh, uh, unusual race in the sense that you had not just you had not a progressive versus a centrist, but you had actually a battle inside the progressive wing with uh, Dennis Kucinich going up against Richard Cordray. Cordray is the former head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. He was backed by Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Dennis Kucinich, uh, the former Congress member, he was backed by the uh, by our revolution, which is the uh, offshoot of the Bernie Sanders campaign. Uh, with the results now win, uh, Cordray has claimed victory with a pretty big margin over Kucinich. Uh, let's start with your thoughts on that contest. Sure, it was a really interesting contest because, uh, as you say, each of these candidates had uh, some arguments for themselves with progressive Democrats. Uh, what happened, though, as the race took off was that the news of the moment in the United States uh, began to affect the race to some extent. When Kucinich got in the race, uh, he wasn't very close to Cordray politically, you know, wasn't wasn't polling all that well. And then you had the horrible shootings uh, in Parkland, Florida, at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School. And that really brought gun issues to the fore. And one of the interesting dynamics is that Richard Cordray, as an Ohio political figure over the years, has been uh, pretty pro-gun and, in fact, had gotten some pretty favorable ratings from the NRA. And Kucinich really went after that very, very aggressively. He would appear at events with a uh, an F on his lapel for the F rating, the failure rating that he got from the NRA. And he really tried to distinguish himself on that gun issue. He also tried to distinguish himself on fracking, on single-payer health care, a host of other issues. So at the end of the day, Kucinich was running significantly to the left of Cordray, even though Cordray had some progressive credentials and obviously had Elizabeth Warren. When all was said and done, uh, what happened in this race is that Cordray had more money. He had some very significant union endorsements in Ohio, a state where unions are still quite strong. And and ultimately, it prevailed. And he prevailed as, I would argue, a a somewhat more mainstream, uh, more traditional Democratic candidate. That made a lot of the the party leaders very happy. Uh, But there there are still a lot of folks in Ohio and around the country who argue that Kucinich is very fiery, very progressive populist campaign. Uh, might have been a more viable, might have been a more, more viable candidacy as you went toward the fall. Well, on that front, do you think the fact that Kucinich lost uh, will be then used by the Democratic Party leadership to say that, look, you know, these lefty candidates like him, they just won't fly in a general election? Well, they do that. They did that in Ohio. And remember, Dennis Kucinich has been around Ohio politics for the better part of 40, well, the better part of 50 years. And uh, he's been a local official in Cleveland, a legislator, a member of Congress, a presidential candidate several times. And so Kucinich had a background. And in Ohio, a lot of the things in his background, we used to attack him. He was portrayed as being too left wing, too uh, tied to all sorts of international figures, international groups. And, And so there was a lot of criticism of him in that regard. The only reason I bring that up is to say that uh, he did run to the left. There's no question of that. Frankly, I thought he ran a pretty impressive campaign on a whole host of measures. But um, I wouldn't suggest to you that other progressives, other lefties, uh, are now written off because Kucinich didn't do well in Ohio. I think what you take away from the Ohio result is that you had some distinct personalities there. And Kucinich, again, with less money, 
uh, viewer endorsements did not prevail. But I would really caution that. I think there's a lot of cases around the country, and I'm watching races all over, where I think progressives can and probably will win. You know, one thing I want to say about Kucinich is that, you know, positions that he was once mocked for a long time ago, uh, including by Democrats, such as, you know, being so vocally anti-war, uh, being vocally pro-LGBTQ, uh, and favoring Medicare for all, have now moved way into the mainstream of the Democratic Party. That's exactly right. And I think those issues gave him a lot of resonance in this campaign. Uh, you know, all I will tell you is uh, that he was attacked very aggressively by a lot of folks in this campaign. I think that probably uh, made it harder for him. Uh, he did not have an immense amount of money. So again, you put that into, into perspective. And what I would tell you is at the start of this year's campaign, uh, it was by national people almost completely agreed that Cordray was going to be the nominee and that he would easily be nominated. Um, what happened was Kucinich got in that race as a, a very independent thinking, progressive populist, ran a, a low budget but high energy campaign and, and developed a significant level of support. Didn't win. In fact, you know, he got beat pretty, pretty soundly here. But uh, I, I wouldn't begin to say that the issues didn't resonate. In fact, one of the interesting things about the race was as it went on, and as Kucinich was really banging on a lot of these progressive issues, you saw Richard Cordray, who was running a very cautious campaign, even what you might regard as a very centrist campaign on a lot of issues, develop stronger positions on the issues, start to sound more populist, start to sound more progressive. And, and I think that Cordray becomes a stronger candidate for the November race for having had the challenge from Dennis Kucinich in, in this primary. Well, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, that's going to be part one of our discussion. In the next part, we're going to move on to another high profile race uh, that's in West Virginia, where the uh, coal baron Don Blankenship uh, is running on the Republican side uh, for a uh, the Senate nomination in a very closely watched contest. Uh, join us in that part two. Uh, John Nichols is National Affairs Correspondent for the Nation magazine. I'm Aaron Matte.